Ladies and gentlemen, hello, and welcome to Nerdy for 30, the podcast where we talk about nerdy-ish things for 30-ish minutes. My name is Kevin Bauer. With me, as always, is my co-host, comedian Tim Keck. And today, we're going to be talking about Avatar, the way of water. Um... <laughs> I hated it. I really <laughs> hated this movie. I did not like it. James Cameron must be stopped. They're making three more of these. Three more of these. Tim, you haven't even said anything yet. Kevin, my expectations going into this movie couldn't have been lower. To say I had zero interest in this would be a gross overstatement. <laughs> I could have never seen this movie and been fine. Uh, I had no interest in why I've been trying to rewatch the first one for a year. Just can't even can't even work up the motivation to, to do it. You know, I'd rather go to the gym mm. or do my taxes than watch the watch Avatar again. And then we were going to go to this movie. We ended up seeing it in 3D. Went to see it in IMAX. IMAX 3D, the biggest screen they got in New York City. And I didn't hate it. <laughs> I didn't hate it. I feel like I get it. I feel like I get it. It's not for me. I don't love it, but I understand why people love it. This was like, it felt like an immersive experience into a culture. It felt like, you know, there's a good, you know, 90 minute movie in there. But that's not what James Cameron wants to do. He doesn't want to make a good movie. He wants to immerse. He he did like a character study. He he built a theme park. He's and he wants you to just go and like look at things. And these are the fun whales. And this is the way the water is. And I want to teach you how to swim. He like why he like like holds your hand and shows you these like fish that swim and like oh we got to protect the fish and and it's just like. I, I feel like if I could somehow disconnect from the need for like a story and interesting <laughs> characters, I could just come. I could I, I understand why people could escape into the world that he has created, because that's truly what he wants is for you to sit and escape into this experience, into this planet, into this environment that he has meticulously curated for us. I don't really want that in a movie, <laughs> but I feel like I've reached an understanding with Avatar that these are not for me, but I get why people like them. I think we got to go on like ayahuasca or like, I don't know, morphine. What's something that like puts you to sleep? <laughs> Avatar? I think I need. Yeah, I need to be like. <laughs> I think I need to, I need to somehow train my, like a met. I need to get into like a meditative state where I just kind of zone out and let Avatar wash over me like waves on the crystal clear pools of whatever goddamn planet they're on. Uh, I don't know. Kevin, am I crazy? You're not wrong in that they created an extremely interesting world. They created a very realistic ecosystem full of beautiful scenery and enchanting wildlife. And it's such a vast, vast landscape in which one could search for years and never find the slightest trace of an interesting story. <laughs> I have no idea how this much money went into making a movie and nobody stopped to think that there should be a plot. What was the plot of this movie, Tim? I would love for you to explain to me what the plot of this movie was. Oh, okay. Cause I, I was excited to get into this story. I, I really wanted to ask you who the protagonist of this movie is <laughs> because I think I know, I think I know, and I'm not happy about it. I'm not happy with the answer. The I protagonist, think, do you know? I was going to say the the character that gets the redemption arc is for sure the burnout space whale. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't think any of the other whales want me around anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I it's just really got to hang of around the high school. Talk to some kids who fucking get it, you know? 
If this movie's Die Hard, he's Winslow who learns to shoot again at the end of the movie. <laughs> like the whale. <laughs> the whale. The one whale is willing to kill. <laughs> the one whale. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's willing to kill. So he's ostracized from the group. And at the end of the day, what do we need? We need whales that kill. That's beautiful. He justified his existence. He's right. The rest of the whales need to wake up. And I'm, I guarantee you. If 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 we didn't have three more movies coming, we would have seen a whale war right now. But they're going to do like an endgame style. You know how like Thanos has those things that like float through the air. Oh, we're yeah. going to have a, a, a planetary battle where these sea whales all come out and just like steamroll the enemy, you know, and ne- the next movie, you know, it's 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 named Avatar after the last airbender. I'm sure I'm not the first person to make this observation. But next, we're going to meet the mountain people and then we're going to meet the fire people. And we're just going to go around. We're gonna, we have three more movies. We're going to meet, you know, each demographic of people. And then the final battle will be an Avengers assemble type where like the five elements of Avatar people come together with their different whales. You know, someone's got dragons somewhere or like, you know, there's something that digs underground. I bet there's like there's like, you know, the the earth people. And there's like a giant, you know, mole or something. Oh my <laughs> they, god! They I ride love it. Battle on, and this is what he's building to. Like we could just, we can all predict where this is all going. There's humans are bad. Avatars are great. Like they love fucking animals and stuff, and it's beautiful. I don't know. It's it's all dumb. It's all dumb and it's stupid. I think the protagonist of this is the kid, is the second son, is the second oldest son. Because he's the only one who has an arc. He drives the story. He's the only one who grows or changes or evolves. And I got to tell you, they already lost me with that. Because if there's one thing I don't think is interesting, it's children. I don't don't find them interesting. I don't find their stories interesting. You have like a grown man who was a human, who's in the body of an avatar, who's supposed to lead the people. And he leaves and he goes away and he doesn't get a he doesn't get an arc. His wife is like the most badass avatar. I mean, I don't know what the I don't know what these people are actually called, but she is like the most badass of these creatures. She's a warrior. She has like the bow that she just like takes down people. She kicks ass. She has nothing to do in this movie. It's all about their their shitty little kids, one of which is like Sigourney Weaver's, you know, you know, miniature. And then the cutest little girl I've ever seen. And the two brothers, one of which is the golden child. So, you know, he's going to die right away. And then the and then the other kid who like wants to fit in bonds with the mean whale and like does all this stuff. And it's very uninteresting. It's very uninteresting hanging out with these kids. <sighs> Kevin, what do you think of my analysis? I think it's I think you're right. It was so funny you mentioned that about the older brother, because when I saw in the opening sequence how many kids they had, my first thought was, oh, a couple of these kids are a couple of these kids are disposable. Oh, yeah. There's oh, yeah. some of these going away. This is too many to sustain for four more movies. Um, I'll have the, another one for sure. He, I, they probably will. I mean, my God, they had, well, spider spiders, the replacement. Um, it was just such a, an overwhelming, like number of characters to get introduced to immediately. Um, I think you're correct in that the youngest kid is the protagonist of this movie. I just have one more question for you, Tim. What's his name? No idea. Couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you a single person's name in this movie. Not a one. Not except Spider, the white kid. That's the only (laughs) the white kid with dreads. That's the only kid. That's the only character in this movie I recognize. Goddamn Spider. Why is he called Spider? No fucking clue. I haven't seen a goddamn (laughs) spider on this blue planet (laughs) once. Once they name him Spider after what? One of the weirdest insects on a planet that they haven't seen in a thousand years or whatever long it takes them to get there. Dumb, dumb name, dumb kid, useless person. Here's where this is going. And I realized watching this movie, James Cameron is a huge fan of anime. He loves anime. Avatar follows anime rules. I can already tell you where this story's going. You know, he does the Avatar last airbender thing, which last bend airbender. It's it's an anime. Sorry to break it to everybody. Going to jump in on that hot debate. Avatar, the last airbender is an anime. I didn't know it was up for debate. I don't think it is an up to debate. I don't know. I have no idea. I mean, it's just there's just people who think it's dumb and people who don't. <laughs> and they're wrong. Which they're definitely going to have another kid. Listen, they, they have the they have the commander. I, I don't know any of these people. I, I have such a I can't even describe this to you because I don't know any of the characters names. So there's the main guy, Sam Worthington, Jake Sully. 
And then the Colonel, who's like a reincarnated Stephen Lang. <laughs> mm-hmm. They're fighting. They should have died. They're both going to die in one of the next movies. They're oh, both yeah. going to kill each other for sure. Uh, Sam Worthington's 100% going to die. The story is going to be becoming about Spider and the middle kid. And Spider's going to become an antagonist. And that's going to be like the, the whole story there. The mother's going to have another kid. She's going to die. Maybe that kid dies. That's a good disposable thing. Sigourney Weaver's kid is going to like, you know, be like a whole prophet type thing. I don't know. It just I just feel like we all I just feel like I know exactly where all this is going. And it, it's not interesting. It's not interesting. <laughs> yeah, I I definitely agree that it's not interesting. I'm I'm. So disappointed oh, was, in how long this movie is. What? That was the other anime thing I was thinking of, too, which is like they will end up working together. Because that's that's like a classic anime trope is you meet a bad guy, then you befriend them and now you're teaming up for stuff. You know, it's why Fast and Furious is so popular, right? Like Sam Worthington and Stephen Lang are going to team up to do something. They're both going to die. And then Spider and so and so are going to be feuding and then they're going to have to put that aside to deal with this other bigger threat. They're going to need to introduce another big bad, which is ultimately humanity. I mean, I don't know. I don't know, Kevin. This is it's just. It's dumb. It's all dumb. It's all stupid. I feel like it could be good, but it's not. It's just. It's dumb. It's fucking dumb. I mostly just want to bring this up because I think it's going to trigger you. I know you don't like trailers, but do you want to. Have you heard anything James Cameron said about Avatar 3? And do you want to know what he said about Avatar 3? No, I would love to know what he says about Avatar 3. I'll tell you what. A trailer isn't going to ruin a goddamn thing for me with this movie. (laughs) I don't think there's anything to ruin. It it would be like a trailer for BBC's uh, Planet Earth ruining something. Like, sorry, oh shit, there's tigers. Alert. Tigers in this? exist. I went right to tigers because <laughs> they're all tigers. They're all like tiger people. It's weird. They're all weird tiger uh, people with five fingers for some reason. Man, so for Avatar three, he's made two notable comments. One is that thus far we have only seen good navi we haven't seen any of the evil navi on the planet yet Ugh. which also i mean yeah stupid and shitty to assume that like you know we're just describing the fact that there are people that are definitively good and definitively evil on this alien planet it's ridiculous james cameron right um pretty convenient jim uh number two the next group they're going to meet are the fire navi I didn't even know that, but I called it. I yeah. called it. Didn't even think about it. You got plausible um, deniability. Yeah, it's it's dumb. I I think I have nice things to say, but I also want to. While we're while we're while we're while we're beefing, while we're beefing, Kevin. How many times did you think like the final fight scene was over? Oh my the, god, like, dude! A mil- uh, How many? <laughs> how how much time of my life did I waste watching people think that they were going to run out of air while a ship is going down? Why did James Cameron decide to run back Titanic on an alien planet? Yes. This whole thing makes sense. <laughs> yes. Look, he James James Cameron is a water loving son of a bitch. This guy was famously eating lunch with Bill Paxton on the deck of the actual Titanic yes. when 9-11 happened. This is real. Look it up. The video is incredible. Um, this guy dedicated his life to the Titanic, basically, as much as he's dedicated to making movies. I think there's like a new like documentary about Titanic coming out this year. I mean, he, he loves it. He loves these big, giant, disaster, epic movies. And... I couldn't believe how long it took for the second avatar to come out and like to, I don't know, get produced. I guess they filmed it like they filmed it long enough ago. I think Edie Falco filmed her scenes nine years ago and said that she assumed the movie had come out and flopped because she never heard what happened to the scenes that she filmed. Um, I feel like half the time that it was taking was James Cameron trying to like you know, reinvigorate himself and get interested in this franchise again. And then he figured out that he could just do water stuff on the avatar planet. And it just opened up like a fountain inside of him. Um, I got a lot of resentment coming to James Cameron today. And it's mostly, it's just entirely because it's like, dude, why, why did this get made? I think the avatar franchise in general, I resent James Cameron. I resent 
everyone that made the Avatar franchise happen more because this is an entertainment franchise getting willed into existence by corporations. This is a testament to how with the sheer force of putting money against something and marketing it, you can tell people that something is a classic. Nobody would have given a shit if they didn't make a second Avatar movie. We all would have been fine. Everybody says the same thing. It's Pocahontas plus Fern Gully. Let's move on. And then it made enough money because of the 3D that they decided, oh no, actually, enough people have seen this that we can claim that this is a classic movie and that this is a beloved franchise. And people will be singing songs to their grandchildren about Natiri and Jake Sully on the planet. I don't fucking care. That they just dumped a whole bunch more money behind it, built a Disney theme park, and just brute forced this thing into the collective consciousness. And I fucking resent it, Tim. Don't tell me what to watch. I'll tell you what I want to watch. (laughs) I think it's a trend that we're going to see more and more with movies. I think, unfortunately, I think everything is going to be everything good is going to be on TV. And the only the people need reasons to go to the theater when we just talked about Megan, the movie, and we talked about our great experience at the movies for that. And that felt like an experience at the movies. Top Gun Maverick, our best movie of last year. Mm. That felt like an experience at the movies. Avatar feels like something you have to see at the movies. It's an excuse to, for theaters to dust off those 3D glasses they've been holding on to <laughs> for a decade or whatever. You know? <laughs> they were so foggy, I could barely see through them. They like they put down a non-refundable deposit on all those in 2010 and they like can't be recycled. Like there's got to be some kind of like a weird chemical on the lenses. Oh, all those things. They're developing like mushrooms that will deteriorate those glasses and like <laughs> over years that those things do not. Those things will be around here way longer than us. <laughs> those that glasses raft in the ocean. <laughs> They'll be done making Avatar movies ocean. by the time those things dissolve. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a mess but i get it but this is a reason to go to the movies this is an experience i think that's one of the positives i say about this is like it is an experience it feels like a ride it feels like like the theme park for this could be amazing like it's a world it's a vibe it's a whole th- like this is what movie going this is what they they think it takes to get people to the movies and i don't think they're necessarily wrong i uh I want to touch on the the, the fight scene at the end <laughs> real quick. The the I don't understand why water was such a threat to these characters that we knew had spent the whole movie like training to be in the water. <laughs> it didn't make any sense to me. Oh, no, the ship is sinking into the water that we've spent all <laughs> all movie getting accustomed to. Oh, no, there's fire coming towards us on top of the water. What do we do? We have to go back to the burning boat. We can't just, I don't know, go underwater and get away from the fire. Like it doesn't. The ending made no sense. Eight different kids were kidnapped eight different times. They got away. They literally like one of the kids makes a joke. Oh, no, I'm handcuffed again. Like it was, <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. Just just too much is going on there. Um, but to the experience, I think. I'm torn because it's simul. I I stand by everything we've said, but I also think they've done some interesting like character work, like storytelling through the characters. It's interesting that every character in this like immediate vicinity in involved in this story is not normal. (laughs) They're all quote unquote normal, right? They're all not. None of them are like a normal, whatever this species is, right? Except for the mother who is also an extreme in that she is in a relationship with someone who is not quote unquote normal. And I don't know. I I feel weird saying normal, but you've got this, you've got the, the, the father is a human who is trapped in an avatar body. His kids are half human avatar, half regular alien with extra fingers. One of their kids is a uh, is a child from an avatar that is brain dead that is somehow connected to like the world tree like all these things are interesting the spider is a kid who is more 
who is a human, wishes he could be an avatar, but isn't, even though they have all these avatars around. You think they could just throw him in an avatar if they needed to, but he doesn't. He's a person who runs around with them. I mean, it is very interesting. And the way they like interact with the world is interesting. And how she has a specific relationship with them. I don't remember. I don't know any of their names. I don't know what's going on, but I I did think. uh, I think he was very intentional with the characterization for these guys and how they each view the world and how they interact with things based on their combination of like physical characteristics and how those manifest like in the, in the world. I thought it was interesting and at the very least it was very intentional and at, at moments I thought it was good. I thought it made sense, you know, <laughs> I hear you and I respect that. I, uh, I hear that. I embrace it. I'm mulling it over in my brain. <laughs> I'm thinking that it's I'm wondering if what happened here, because he did. He does have the story mapped out. They like spent so much time. I read an interview where he said that they wrote, I think, like five separate drafts of The Way of Water. They actually ended up spinning one of those drafts off into an original graphic novel that takes place between the first and second movies. Um, Because it was like they knew that this wasn't where they wanted to go with the second movie, but it is like a piece of story that happened. And so they thought they would release that because it would make more money. Um, But they've spent so much time mapping out the future of these stories, which is something that we have asked for. We've talked about how with the Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power, that got picked up for what? I think like five seasons off the drop. Like they invested so much money in this to build these sets because Amazon knew that we're going to be spending like the next five years in these sets with these characters. And they know that there are some things that were set up in the first season that aren't going to pay off until the final season. I think we might be seeing a similar thing happening with Avatar, but I wonder if they kind of didn't course correct enough after doing all of these future stories, because to be able to write five movies, like they know these characters extremely well. So I don't, necessarily think that they were coming at this movie with fresh eyes and thinking like oh we know that something really cool happens with spider in between movies three and four but like is there enough meat on spider and avatar 2 to have him be as big of a character as he is i don't really think so so i think he's set up to be an antagonist for whatever the protagonist's thing is i mean he's he's got enough conflict going on Mm -hmm. i mean all of their their dna is also complicated that i think it can be picked apart for storytelling purposes i think there are we touched on like the kids and the who their parents are and there are some uh vagaries that I found uh, honestly disturbing. If you look at them in a certain light, you know, there's just like a a comatose avatar body that gives birth. That's weird. There's a commander who is a brutal military man who has a kid, no partner in sight. That's weird there. If if you look for weirdness, you can find it. Uh, Who's spiders mom? No idea. Uh, I don't know. It's weird. I don't want to talk about it anymore, but I feel like I, I hope it's I hope it's like leading to something. I hope there's like something coming up because uh, right now it's just strange. It's yeah. just strange, weird behavior to just leave hanging out there for everybody. Uh, James Cameron. Specifically, uh, Quaritch, the commander, was uh, Stephen Lang, at least, was 56 when they filmed the first Avatar movie. So Quaritch is 56. Just happens to, you know, have like a like a two-year-old running around. Um, Yeah. yeah, Very strange. I think the spider connection is uh, twofold. I think Quaritch was a backdoor way to basically reboot the first movie or like recap the first movie because all the stuff that Jake had to do in the first Avatar movie, Quaritch has to do in like the first (laughs) half hour of this movie. Um, Yeah. And then I'm willing to bet that there's going to be something down the line. We have Quaritch, who we know is a person whose personality was saved to an SD card and then inserted in this avatar body that was grown specifically for him genetically. Uh, We have him running around in the avatar body that was specifically grown for him genetically. And we're told so many times over the course of the first movie that the avatar has to be an exact genetic match for the person operating it. 
which is why Jake Sully was able to pilot the Avatar in the first place. It's because his twin brother was the one that was actually supposed to pilot it, but got mm. killed. I think we're setting it up so that maybe Spider can take over Quaritch's Avatar in the future because he'll be a genetic match for it as his son. I was going the opposite with that. I thought you were going to say the Colonel takes over Spider's body. Oh, oh. Then Spider becomes an avatar. Oh, my God. Oh, that's creepy as shit. That also we talked about that coming out of the movie, too, where it's like the biggest piece of technology that gets glossed over on all this is the fact that you're able to, like, broadcast someone's consciousness in the first movie. When Jake Sully is going back and forth, what? Yeah, no, go on. I'm I'm just I'm excited to talk about this. You're right. There's two mind blowing pieces of technology. I think the other one is that now instead of unobtainium, they're going after this whale liquid that makes you immortal. Yeah. So you can be in a you can be you can be in a in a a physical an immortal physical body. You can also mentally live on forever in a hard drive. Crazy. What else do they need? Bananas. That wasn't even the hard drive wasn't even the piece of tech that I was talking about. That's a third one in there. What I was talking about is the fact that in the first movie, they were able to put the people piloting the avatars in some sort of electronic machine and then wirelessly beam their consciousness to this other creature, like this empty vessel that they made. There's no like they're not plugged into anything directly. Once Jake does the initial thing and they do the initial setup of the avatar, the avatar goes to sleep. Jake's in the pod. There's also the thing where the avatar is awake when Jake's in the pod. And then when Jake's out of the pod, the avatar's asleep. He's conscious the whole time. Like he just never needs to sleep either. So they've unlocked all the hours in the day. They're immortal. Their consciousnesses are backed up and can be beamed across an entire planet. It's wild <laughs> technology is the technology is so crazy there yeah now jake doesn't even have a body and they're just like pl- I, I was worried they were going to go like agent smith with it you know where all of a sudden mm. there's a million of the colonel like there's nothing to prevent that from happening i think there's like a ton of problems with how much technology they have there's so many loopholes there's no way he's going to close them all there's no reason why we can't have a bunch of colonel what's his faces we could have 50 of them. They could just keep sending them after Jake. Jake dies. Who cares? He could download himself. He could put himself back in a new new avatar body. Like they, Everyone can be immortal. There's There could be zero stakes. I don't know. They've created a very uninteresting world. I'm also a little confused why um, I guess maybe the avatar planet isn't big enough for everybody, but why can't they just, you know, live peacefully among these other creatures? You know, if they don't, especially if they don't need unobtainium anymore and they're just looking for a place for humanity to live, just, you know, ask if you can share. Isn't there like all this sea? Just like build some floating islands or something out there. You know, like there's so much planet left. Like you could, you could find stuff. I don't know. It's, it's crazy. It feels like everything is very well thought out. And, I want to say there's depth if you look for it and it's definitely intentional and he definitely means this all to be very metaphorical and like deep and thoughtful and reflective and say something about society and all this stuff. And I don't know. I, I don't know. It doesn't. I don't know, Kevin. I can't say I hated this movie. I feel like I have a deeper understanding of these. I think I'm honestly looking forward to the next one. Hmm. And simultaneously never going to watch this one again. You know, I just probably just won't. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I'm ever going to do this one again. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see, Uh, Kevin. Any other uh, final thoughts? Any beeves and thieves to wrap this bad boy up? I think I pretty, pretty clearly explained my stance on it. Uh, The one I'll say a thief for me, the scenes where they showed the different aquatic creatures, like, all the aquatic creatures look great. That was the thing where the first Avatar movie, the CGI looked incredible for the time. And rewatching it, we rewatched the first Avatar movie on New Year's Day because Lauren had never seen it. Still holds up, frankly. Like some of the stuff is kind of bad. Some of the creatures haven't aged as well. But for the most part, the Navi themselves look just about as good as most of the stuff we're getting the Miss EU now. Um, and then that had me thinking, well, what can they really improve on this one? I mean, they did. They found a way. This looked terrific. The graphics, the visuals, amazing. 
Yeah. Do you think it made the same leap that the first one did from a technology standpoint? No, but I don't think that there was as much opportunity to. I think the biggest thing with this generation, if you look at like video games, it's ray tracing, it's light and reflections. But they already, you know, had things looking terrific beforehand. And I don't think that there was necessarily as much ground to improve on versus like if you look at like the sea creatures in Finding Nemo and the water in Finding Nemo versus this movie, it's like. Holy mother of God. Yeah, this might be the best looking underwater thing ever. I mean, I really didn't even think about it until the movie was over. Like, oh, that's flawless, you know? Mm -hmm. And then you you compare that to like Aquaman. (laughs) And you're like, even, I mean, now I kind of want to see some like side by sides with like Black Panther, like Wakanda forever. Yeah. and, And see what that looks like, because that looks cartoonish, which I think is fine. Mm hmm. But because they're superhero, they're comic book movies. This looks like real. This is like a Nat Geo thing. This is crazy. This is. I mean, you're right. It's like Animal Planet or something like they actually went out there and filmed this footage. (laughs) It looks that good underwater for a lot of it. I mean, it's it's crazy. What was it about the frame rate? Uh, Oh, the high frame frame rate rate was so weird. Yeah, I, I think in like 3D at times it was very overwhelming. It looked like jumpy and blurry. And I, I feel like that's how he, int- he intended. I find it hard to believe that this wasn't all intentional on his part. Like, how could he allow a movie to be that jumpy and overwhelming in IMAX? Right. You know, what's funny is you mentioned that like some stuff was jittery, which was kind of confusing to me because I was like, well, it shouldn't be jittery because the whole thing with high frame rate is that it's 48 frames per second instead of 24. So it should be smoother, which is why things look like they're moving faster than we're used to. Um but I was right there with you where it's like, I definitely noticed scenes where things were like, seemed like stuttering a bit. And I was like, is there something wrong with the projector? What happened? I looked it up. It turns out that certain scenes in this, in the IMAX high frame rate cut, like we saw, were still 24 frames per second. So in certain scenes of the movie, mid conversation, we were going from 48 frames per second to 24 frames per second. The 24 is what we're used to. That's what looks like normal when we're watching um, movies and stuff for the most part. But the 48 jumping to the 24, suddenly we see that we're only seeing half of the frames and it looks like it's like stuttering on the screen. Um, Huh. Crazy. If it had been 24 the entire time, we never would have noticed the thing. But the 48 looks terrible. It's like motion smoothing on the TV. The soap opera effect is just like. It's awful. It feels like how much did he do in 48? He did like the vast majority of the movie for the IMAX cut in 48. It does make the 3D look smoother because when we were watching the 3D trailers before uh, the movie started, those were like rough to watch. uh, And those were all 24 frames per second. So. Yeah, I did. I'm only seeing IMAX 3D now. That's how I roll. (laughs) Nothing but IMAX for this guy. We're not going to see as many movies together. I just learned that. (laughs) Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, what did you think? Are you with Tim on this one? Is this low key kind of a cinematic masterpiece? Or are you with me? I I thought that was going to drop like five seconds before it did. Let us know. Reach out nerdy430 at gmail.com. Send us an email. Follow us on Instagram. Come back here next week. We'll talk to you then. What are we doing next week? Do we know next week? We're doing our... uh, I don't know what we're doing next week. uh, Oh, it's Bahubali. We're diving back into Tollywood cinema. This will be a blast. Very excited for this. Awesome. We'll see you then. Till then, everybody. Stay nerdy. Stay nerdy. Bye. Bye.